Good morning, my fellow adventurers. Welcome back to Living the Grand Adventure. Day two here at the Burr Oak Reservoir. Uh, we're at Wildcat Hollow Trailhead. We uh, just got up. It's about 7.15. Well, we got up at 7.15. It's about 7.45 now. We've been kind of getting everything packed up. Pretty much have 90% of our stuff stowed away. We just got, just got to get the tent down and a couple odds and ends and eat breakfast, and then we're going to be on the trail. Last night was pretty good. I'd say both of us were asleep well before 11. And I, I slept okay. I woke up a couple of times uh, just um, mainly because of the heat. It didn't actually start cooling off till about 3 o'clock in the morning. Once that happened, I slept really well. I'd say I probably still got a good seven and a half hours sleep altogether. So not too bad. But uh, beautiful morning today. It's actually kind of cool. I don't have cell reception and I don't have a thermometer with me, so I can't tell you the temperature, but it feels like it's actually probably in the low 60s, upper 50s. Of course, we're expecting pretty hot temperatures later on. The heat will start moving in very shortly. The sun has come up through the trees here. And we are ready for a good day of hiking. Very beautiful day, like I said, no clouds in the sky that we can see. So we're kind of excited. We are definitely going to make it to our next campsite, which like I said is about seven and a half, eight, eight and a half miles, give or take, depending on trail conditions and um, how long this trail actually is. I haven't really measured it. I think it's about three quarters of a mile, the trail between here and back to the Lakeview Shore Trail. Uh, Alex is wanting to push. <laughs> Uh, the 14 to 15 miles and actually get out of here. I told her I don't know how that's going to happen depending on the heat But I'm willing to try it Of course also I'm thinking once she sees the site that I've got picked out for tonight She may kind of think twice about that as well because she may be like "Ooh, this is a nice site So that's the plan, you know, you know when you hike hike trails things are fluid sometimes you can do them faster Sometimes you can do them slower. So we'll see what happens if we if we do get to do the 15 miles, great. If we don't, I'm not stressing it. I, personally, I'm cool with do it, just doing the eight and a half today because of the heat. My thing is, is I've had the same like personal record for two years because I hit, uh, I believe it was like 11.2 miles um, on a Red River Gorge trip. That's a great video or a set of videos. You should check those out. They're wonderful. And it was a great trip and I love doing it, but it's just, since then I haven't hit anything higher. I've come close with like maybe 10 miles, but I really want to be able to push myself and hit a higher mark because it would be great to make a new personal record Yeah, you, you had like 10.7 or something like at uh, Archer's Fork at last day, mm -hmm. so, or 10 and a half. So yeah, I mean, you know, she that, that's kind of her personal best. My personal best being almost 15. I did that at Zaleski, not by choice. That was the trip where I went in the last day um, I was supposed to stay the night and then the group come in at site three and they had the guns and liquor and I said no I'm not staying around guns and liquor and I went and hiked out the additional five six miles I did so it ended up being all it was like 14.8 miles so that was a fun trip too up until that point anyway and even the hike out was fun so but like I said we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this stuff tore down grab our breakfast and we'll see you on the trail here in a few minutes, guys. All right, guys, it's about 10 after nine and we are heading on trail. Feel pretty good this morning. I uh, drank about a liter and a quarter of water. Well, a liter of electrolytes and a liter of water. Alex got her a half liter, so she's feeling pretty decent. And now we are heading over here. We're going to jump on the Buckeye Trail here and take that for another quarter of a mile or so, or three quarters of a mile, excuse me, and uh, then we will head back onto the Lakeview Trail, heading over towards the Wayne National Forest and our salt, if that's where we're staying. <laughs> but yes, guys, this is 
where that trail is and that's the trailhead this spills out to wildcat hollow i mean it's really right here this i mean it's pretty cool of course i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure when you go into wildcat hollow the buckeye trail actually continues down through there and already got a spider web <laughs> but this should be flat for a few minutes we'll go down into that valley with the overgrowth and get across those couple of creeks that we had across very pretty morning though guys quite kind of comfortable still but i can actually already feel a touch of humidity in the air so we're definitely hoping to beat as much of this heat as possible but i figure we'll get caught in the thick of things probably about noon one o'clock but like i said watch this stump alex it's a very big stump <laughs> but it is a pretty morning though not a cloud in sight sun's starting to get up kind of high where it's going to illuminate the forest really well kind of excited for this hike i think this is going to be a fun day and we'll see what we see what we explore and um how we're feeling as far as how many miles we want to push today Ooh, this is kind of squishy now where you had the dew fall We'll see you once we get over to uh, the Lakeview Trail and start heading down the eastern side of Burr Oak Reservoir. We completed the division trail that goes from Wildcat over here to the Lakeview Trail. This is where it's at. There's an intersection and it's here at Point I. I'll show you this sign here. We came out from this direction here and this is Point I. And then when you come to here, this does divide. Blue trail goes that way, that's the Buckeye. Lake, Lake View trail goes this way, that's the yellow. If you go out this way, it goes to Wildcat. That actually is 0.4 miles, so it's not even as long as far as I thought it was. We actually hiked that in about 10, 10 to 15 minutes, so making good time. And we are now on the Lake View trail, heading over to the west side of the lake, and we're gonna hike south from there. And this trail, at least at this point in time, is wide open. I'm hoping it kind of stays that way. Beautiful morning though. Definitely a good morning to get out and stretch the legs and make some good time before that heat does settle in. It is actually already very humid and muggy. The heat just hasn't come in, so it's not so bad yet. But basically that uh, Buckeye Trail goes up that hill there down into a valley and then over to the trailhead so what spiderweb <laughs> alex got a spiderweb it's the type of moment where you hit a spiderweb and it hits right into your mouth and you're like if i open my mouth and you know kind of freak out about it i'm going to end up eating the spiderweb so i better just not <laughs> yeah i'm hoping the trail stays like this we'll make some good time <laughs> I figure we'll have some ups and downs, especially on that west side. But yeah, we're on a flat now, heading along. The lake is actually out that direction. This is all marshland right here. But kind of cool. Like I said, a pretty morning. And we're definitely feeling good after a decent night's sleep last night and filling up on water and food this morning. Basically, our next big stop will probably be lunchtime. Maybe take a 15 somewhere along the way, depending on how we're feeling. Yeah, the hardest thing to do is tie your shoe on trail. <laughs> well, guys, we're about two miles in. A little bit less than an hour, probably about 50 minutes. And uh, we're actually starting to see the lake some. It's kind of tree covered, but you can see it. It's out there, if you notice. Yeah, we're starting down the we're starting down the west west side of the lake, just doing the up and downs that you do on this trail. See if you notice, got a little incline, and then we'll probably go down shortly thereafter. Still have yet to get signal, so haven't been notified, been able to notify family or anything. But it's okay. We're working to get to a place where we have some signal, and just trying to move along as fast as possible here. It's already starting to warm up. It's about 10 o'clock, a little after 10, and it's pretty hot. I'd say probably low to mid 80s. 
and the humidity is already in so we know we're definitely going to see some high temperatures later today So guys, we finally got signal and we're moving back up the rest side of the lake now, definitely a little bit further into it. We're way up on a ridge, pretty high up actually. We've had a couple of substantial inclines that uh, were kind of strain strenuous. Uh, no switchbacks with them, they were kind of just straight up almost. But this area right here as we're going down is switchback somewhat. Talk. There's a fog. That's it. That little frog on the trail. We've seen a few of those. We've seen about three of those big ones and then like two or four, or two to three tiny small ones that mm -hmm. are like size. But like I said, this area is switched back so it's not quite as hard on the knees going down. And of course, if you were coming up this side, it wouldn't be somewhere, nowhere near as bad. But those two inclines, well, there was one incline, then a decline that was a steep, and then another incline. And then we've come to this decline, like I said, that is switched back somewhat. So be aware there are some inclines that you will have to do over on this west side, at least to this point. We'll see how it goes going forward. Uh, got a little ways to go, but we should be coming up on the dock four and the actual state park campground. You do go through that, or at least buy it. And we'll take a look at that as we go through. We are definitely moving along the trail. Alex is borrowing my Trekking poles occasionally knock down some spider webs. There's a lot of spider webs on this trail, on this side anyway. It's just a little afternoon, so we've been on trail almost three hours, about two hours, 45 minutes, because we left between 9.10 and 9.15, so. And we're coming up on about four and a half miles. It's been rough going. This trail is no joke, at least through this section, uh, between Wildcat, and we're coming up on the actual family campground, the State Park campground. It's been no joke. It's been up and down, very, very steep inclines and declines. And that's why we're making a little bit slower time than usual because it's it's been pretty rough terrain. Very tight, kind of rocky in spots, roots. So it's been interesting. It's not super hot just yet, but it's starting to come in. You know, it's afternoon, so we'll definitely start seeing some rise in the temperatures. Got a little flat section with a small incline right through here, so I figure I'll pull out and kind of record a little bit. Like I said, it's been a lot of up and downs like this, and occasionally you'll get a steep incline or a steep decline, and that just kind of beats you down in the heat. But we're making it. We're going to be okay. We're going to get to where we need to today. Don't think we're going to be able to push and do the 15 miles. It's just not going to happen. We didn't realize the trail was going to be quite this hard going out over in here. It definitely is not as hard on the other side of the lake. This side is much more rugged. So if you come out, be aware the western side of the lake is much more rugged. Honestly, I can't even call it the western side of the lake because we haven't seen the lake hardly at all. We've been back up in the hills and just woods walking literally pretty much since uh, we started down, down beside the lake. We saw a glimpse of it and then we went straight uphill. And we've been over here off the lake ever since. So it's kind of kind of crazy. They call it the Lakeview, Lakeview Trail. Yeah, it's not much of a view over on this area. I think once we get past dock four, things will kind of get a little bit easier because the trail seems to run adjacent to the, the lake. And we may get a little bit flatter and definitely more views. But we're just trying to get to the campground and see if there's a picnic table or a little pavilion or something over in there where we could sit down and do lunch. 
because we're both kind of starting to get hungry and wanting to kind of get somewhere where we can get in the shade and sit down get some water and chill out horseshoes this is part of a bridle trail so definitely hoof prints there horseshoe prints i guess you'd say we've seen some sign of deer and some canine whether it was a dog or maybe a little fox or something coming through here but it's about all we've seen as far as you know tracks we've seen a couple of squirrels and some chipmunks like kind of like you normally do and some frogs and plenty of spider webs <laughs> we've both been kind of complaining about that we've both been cocooning a few times <laughs> but still pretty nice trail i mean we're enjoying it it's just it is a little bit more rugged than what we were thinking it was going to be good thing is i know once we get to site we can sit down and relax tomorrow's trails aren't quite as difficult and that's a that's gonna be much welcomed after today and the interesting thing is i mean it looks like we're down in a valley here we've done nothing but ascend to this it's just it seems the further we go inland the higher the hills get we haven't had hardly any declination so a lot of wood walking guys at least through this area i'll let you know when we get to the campground if it gets any better so guys we actually come up out of the trail it comes out right over here you can see right beside the amphitheater that's where it comes out and it looks like we're actually going to go straight across over into here somewhere because there's a yellow blaze here and there's one on that sign but we came out we're, we're this is our lunch this is where we're stopping for lunch we're in the shade kind of kind of secluded um, this is actually a campsite, but it was the first day when we came to and we said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and sit down and eat lunch. Uh, we were really hot. It, it just really started getting to us. Guys, I, I, I've hiked a lot of trails here in Ohio, and I really hate to say it, that section of trail from Wildcat to here is the hardest section of trail I've hiked in Ohio so far. And I don't have many other trails left to do. Um, you know, we've got Shawnee basically in Tar Hollow. That's the only two trails we've got left to do. Of course, there's the AEP recreational area, but I didn't even really looked into that one. But we've got the other two to do, and then like, you know, probably the only other place I could say was this hard of a section. There's the one section uh, between site two and site three at Zaleski, and then that one big incline at Archer's Fork. Other than that, this has been the hardest section of trail I've hiked here in Ohio. My thing is, is with that, is all of those that we're talking about have been like a mile or less. This section was five and a half miles almost. That was like... Well, re really once it started getting hard, it was four miles. Four and a half miles, give or take. Yeah. And it was constant about. up and down. Well, it was up and down, but more more elevation. A lot more elevation than down. It, it was rough. Yeah, th th this was a rough section of trail. And, and Sorry. Go ahead. It, it's just... There, there are times where it's like, okay, rolling, rolling, walking, that's fine. But then it would literally go like this, and it's like, what? <laughs> then we would come down a little bit, and then we'd have a little bit of a steep decline, and then we'd go back to the rolling. But we didn't have that many declines. Well, so well we like I said, what, what got me too, I mean, like all the other trails, you can count Archer's Fork, Mohican, Zaleski, Charles C. Dean Wilderness, even Red River Gorge. When you did your incline and got on a ridge, it was flat for a little ways. This was barely flat, other than maybe. A you'd have twenty mile. feet. You'd have twenty feet. The down. whole entire thing. It was maybe. Then you go up and up and up and up and up, and then you go twenty feet, and then down, down, up, 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 up. It was, it, it was bad enough elevation. We actually had stairs, which that's kind of rare on trail. Yeah. Speaking of the stairs, literally about a tenth of a mile back that direction, we were actually beside the lake. I mean, we were five feet above it. Had a decent little view. I mean, it was kind of still tree covered, so I didn't really record anything there. I was hoping maybe we'd get a little elevation and you could see it a little bit better, but you couldn't. And then immediately we started up and then we started hitting stairs. And there was about, a sec about five or six sections of stairs, which of course you kill elevation going up or down with that, but it's very strenuous. And literally like right here at the opening, there's a set of stairs that's probably about 30 feet down. And then there's a little incline and you come out into this field. So, 
they definitely don't switch back too much on this this section of the trail or anything like that and then you know like when you come in here to the campsite either going down or up you're going to hit those stairs so be aware of that as well but guys we're going to go ahead and kind of enjoy lunch um, relax a few minutes we actually both have kicked our socks and shoes off my socks actually had to dry from sweat so uh, mine, I, mine were still trying to stand up but I took them off <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're going to enjoy our lunch. Uh, find us a water spigot, fill up on water. Actually, to be honest, we have 1.2 miles over to dock four. I'm literally just going to fill up probably my 20 ounce, 24 ounce water bottle. That should suffice me for a mile. And then we'll fill up on all of our water there. And then from there, we should have roughly two miles to our site. But we'll see you when we get back on the trail, guys. We got our lunch over with. We sit there about an hour and 15 minutes basically recuperated from that rough trail and now we're heading up got a little bit of a road walk here in the state park campground this is what you're kind of looking at it's got sporadic fountains for water like I said for the most part this area is better for uh, RVs I've said that when we stayed here before a few years ago but basically we've got roughly 1.2 miles over to dock four and that's where we're going to fill up our water for the night there is a fountain near the uh, campsite that wasn't on when i was here in september last year i don't know if it's on now we're not taking a chance that it won't be on so we're going to go ahead and fill up on water at dock four and if we happen to have water at that it just give us extra water. Basically, we're going. We have a couple of bladders we want to fill up, and we'll use that to kind of rinse off really good and get cool again. If we don't have that luxury, we don't have that luxury. Right over there, down that hill. Not here, but over there. <laughs> That's actually our old campsite that we stayed at. The one and only time that we've stayed here at the uh, state park campground. But we are heading over to the Wayne National Forest and then we'll be camping at Burr Cove tomorrow night. Got a yellow blaze here. So yeah, we're still road walking a little bit. I see a post there. Might be where we go into the woods. Definitely sitting down for that hour, hour and 15 minutes. Taking our shoes off and relaxing and just recuperating for a few minutes. Man, it made a big difference in how both of us feel. I see another post, yeah. I told you we had a little bit of road walk here and there. Not sure where it goes from here. I don't mind it. You don't like it. I don't, I like don't it. mind it so much now. I didn't used to like it, but I've got better shoes. That makes a big difference. It really does. My only complaint with road walking is the sun. Yeah, if you were shaded more often, it would be nicer, but otherwise I'm okay with it. This is actually the road that does lead out to the state park. If you follow this road actually out a little ways, it will actually uh, meet up with uh, Burrup Cove. I think if you take a left here, actually I don't know where that goes, that's different. Looks like it's a service road out that way, so a little bit further up I think is where you, is where you can go to um, the lake, which we'll see that tomorrow. Oh, looks like we actually take a lift here. Kind of cool. High five. High five to the yellow. It's kind of neat. Not sure what type of flowers those are. I'll have to look it up. Something like them, yeah. Oh, I guess that's that's the trail right there. Obviously, double posted. <laughs> hey, Alex, I see a downhill. First time today, pretty much. <laughs> Feels like. Looks like we're heading into the trail now. Actually, got off that road walk, which is nice. I think we do have another road walk a little bit I over like next to Duck Four. It's just a service road. But here we are, wide open trail. In the shade, we're gonna have a 
good mile and a half over here to uh, dock four guys looking forward to this looks like it's going to be hopefully a hair bit easier trail there's this little birdie on the like trail here that's just walking in front of us i think it was a robin it just kept walking and then it would fly a little bit and then keep walking and now it flew off but it was funny oh that's a pretty little area right here yeah. i'm digging it Alex could move the downhills a little bit faster than I can, obviously. I still have that left knee that's occasionally pulling, so I have to watch it. Mainly it's a more of a precaution. I could probably move faster, but I don't want to over overexert myself and actually pull something in that knee. And there I am on trail sitting on my butt trying to have somebody come get me. So just try to do what I think is smart. Yeah, well, I take a small step. My right step is actually kind of bigger, but my left step is a little bit smaller because I'm protecting that knee. It's just something in my back of my mind now. And I'm not wearing my brace because I try not to wear a brace unless it's actually bothering me. But. Yeah, maybe. Boy, it, the heat is coming in, though. And it's not, I mean, it's still humid, but the humidity doesn't seem to be as bad as it was yesterday. Of course, we were here a little bit later, so we'll see how that feels. So guys, we came down that decline and spilled out into this parking lot. And this is actually the parking lot for the beach area. And we're gonna road walk for a little way right through here. Got the yellow blazes on the side of the road here. So we're gonna walk through here we should get really good views of the lake all through here but this is the beach area we'll be at this tomorrow actually swimming you can call it that i'm not a great swimmer <laughs> we'll be wading into the water <laughs> like, eh. doggy paddling in the water <laughs> pretending to swim for alex It's not turkey. What is that thing? It's a buzzard. Oh, whoa. I've never seen one in real life. Guys, we were just walking up here and we saw this thing and we thought it was a turkey at first. I wasn't sure because it was kind of, it was a little bit distant. That's a buzzard. Oh, it's so big. Oh. I, I've never seen one in real life though. It's sitting right over there. Thing's huge. Yeah. That thing's literally the size of my head. So yeah, we're, we're at dock three now. Finished up that little road walk. Now we just gotta figure out where the trail goes from here. Uh, we're gonna look for water too, because we're gonna go and fill up all of our water bottles. So we've got enough for the night if by chance that one water fountain does not work. Very pretty lake. 
really pads down here close to the shore. Yeah. Great area, man. Yeah, but this is a big dock here. I think this is the biggest one they've got. So guys, we just passed dock four. That's what it was. And per my information via Burr Oaks website and the woman I spoke to earlier, dock four is supposed to have water at their water fountain. No, it's off. So it could be interesting trying to find water tonight. I literally have 24 ounces. Alex has a liter. Uh, we'll figure something out. We'll drop something down in the water and fish it out somehow I mean, we've got to have water for the night at least but that was very disappointing when you get bad information even from state officials i maybe she was confused which dock had water but i checked i mean even on their website it doesn't show any closures so it kind of irritates me there's no reason now with all the restrictions in ohio lifted not to have the water fountains on for people hiking in the middle of heat like this. It's it's uncalled for. So yeah, I'm kind of kind of complaining a little bit, kind of upset. But we'll make the best of it. We always do. Just uh, I I, I kind of shake my head at it because I think it's actually at this point in time more dangerous not to have that water fountain on than anything that you may catch from somebody else. So here we are walking in the woods once again, very low on water. Well, we made it to site. If you guys will recognize this site to an extent, there was a big log sitting over here and they've taken it out. It looks like somebody may have burned it or something. I don't know what they've done. The dam is right over there through the trees. We've got the tent up right here. Hi. We basically ran the last two and a half miles we got a notification well actually we heard thunder out this direction and we got a notification and we started looking at phones and talking about a heavy thunderstorm coming through the area it actually went through the city to the south Gloucester, Gloucester. and uh, we luckily got here into sight at a very very hurried pace and it was sprinkling a little bit of water. So we just threw the tent up the first place we come across. It's not even set up correct. It's kind of janky. I'm gonna have to readjust a few things, but is it on a real bad slant? Yes. Cause I'm sitting here like this and look at this one. We may even have to move the tent. We were just trying to get it up. So we had some shelter if a thunderstorm did come in and we got all of our gear inside real quick. And then I sat down here for about five minutes and it quit raining completely. So the sky is starting to actually get kind of blue back out that direction. So I'm hoping the rain blows over and maybe we could just move the tent and get it, get it a little bit more in an area where we'll be more comfortable. But we're in here now, like I said, it's just after five. <clears throat> if we feel like it, we're going to try to do a fire. There's a little bit of wood laying around, but I don't even know if we're going to bother because that hike got me. I'm pretty... I'm tired. I'm pretty beat. I did 10 miles at Charles St. Dean Wilderness in four hours. And that didn't wear me out. I, I actually, you know, I went down and swam a little bit, basically. Set up, had a cup of coffee, enjoyed it, did a lot of filming. And that's a hard trail, guys. Yeah. Because, like, right now, we're, like amped up from being on the trail well i think actually frustrated with it with everything that's been going on no water the th th that's my big complaint is i do not understand why they don't have the water on at dock four that makes no sense especially considering i've talked to people and they said yeah we've, we yeah, it's on don't worry about it you're good i don't get it either it's stupid well my thing is is like literally you see people literally passing by there we saw at least six cars in that one parking lot and then we saw even another one looking at the sign yep so she's ready to go on a day hike which you know what we use for on a day hike? Water. Water. Exactly. <laughs> like, go on. But I'm really debating 
just kind of grabbing our electronics and walking over there and seeing if by chance that filter that, that fountain's on I don't think anybody, I mean, I personally, like I said, I mean, unless somebody's actually coming through, I don't even think, even if they come through, I don't even know if they could see this tent where we've got it. So I don't think anybody, anybody would bother it. So I'm really debating walking over there. I'm pretty much sure it's not going to be on. But if it would happen to be, it would save us a lot of filtering. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. We'll figure out water situation. It is coming kind of blue sky, so I figure we'll start seeing the sun, which means it'll get even warmer. But we're going to try to enjoy the evening, guys. So, guys, we walked over to the dam area. And that fountain that didn't have water last year, uh, when I came through in September, the fountain was off. It was on today. They actually have water in it. So we got to filter or get, get water. We didn't have to filter. <laughs> we were kind of stressing that because the couple of spots that we saw where we could get water, I worry about Burr Oak Lake, the reservoir lake here. They always warn about having blue algae and it's not very conducive to human you know, uh, anatomy. And I really didn't want to filter out of that. I mean, we were kind of in dire straits if, if that had not had water, we would have had to do it. And we've got some stuff at home that can kind of help kind of alleviate that type of problem. We could have taken that when we got home. And I also carry, uh, well actually Alex has it in her water kit, the little droplets that's supposed to get rid of a lot of that stuff too well the tablets and we could have used those and that's what we would have done but Alex was like why don't we go over and see if that fountain happens to be on and luckily it was on and we now have over five liters of water we're pretty good I think a little bit, little bit better spirits now it's cooler there's nowhere near as much humidity as there was earlier it, I, I guess that thunderstorm rolled in and it has taken out some of the moisture in the air and it's just not as hot our like original estimate of this trail was supposed to be around eight, maybe even less miles for today. Nope, <laughs> nowhere near it. No, it seems like all trails for this trail, and even the uh, some of the other maps that I've seen online are a touch off. They're about, I'd say, ten to fifteen percent off in distance each each sec segment. Uh, we did notice there are a few reroutes. Looked like there was some flooding in one area. And of course, a couple of reroutes due to large fallen trees. So maybe that'll account for some of it. And if you guys do have all trails, look at the Burr Oak Reservoir trail map on there. There are actually sections where the trail dips into the water. So that probably is another reason that that trail length is not accurate. And may account for the fact that they talk about it being an easier trail than what it really is. It is what it is. We've completed this. I know what the next day looks like. It's not too awful bad. So guys, it's about 8.15. We're definitely set up for the night. Air mattresses, sleeping bags, everything in there. Got probably about 80% of our stuff packed up. Alex is pretty much actually completely packed up and got everything underneath the, the tent for the night. We've got the uh, NOAA radio on, listening for uh, the idea of maybe more rain tonight or something like that. It's actually stating uh, pretty much all the rain should be out of the area for now. There might be a slight chance of isolated showers tomorrow afternoon. And we should be good until Wednesday morning, which there is a, a much more increased chance of rain. So we'll just pack up. We're, we'll be car camping then. It's not so bad. Basically just pitch in whatever we have setting out. It'll be wet. We can take it home. We'll let it air out and dry. So it's not a big deal beautiful night though uh, it's much cooler than it was last night at this time mainly because of the humidity I think the temperature is pretty much about the same but there's not as much humidity I guess where the rain showers came in it pushed a lot of that out so it's been a pretty pretty enjoyable night um, I went ahead and got me a little cup of coffee about an hour and a half ago so I've, I'm a little bit more rejuvenated feel a little bit better uh, we did move the tent from over there like I, we initially had it, we moved it over here, which is the spot I had it last year. And it's much more conducive for us to sleep in. It's a little bit flatter, so I think we'll be comfortable tonight. Looking out across the lake here, it's kind of nice. That's the dam over there. Definitely a lot more forested right now than when I was here in September, but you know, the trees had started dying off a little bit. Sky is pretty much blue. There's some white cloud, poofy clouds in the air, but nothing major. 
Uh, we're looking at a prey. What'd you say? An 80% moon tonight? So 80 tonight, 75 tomorrow. So we should have some nice uh, moonlit skies over the next couple of nights. Of course, like I said, it is a little bit cloudy, but that's actually supposed to clear off and it's supposed to be pretty sunny tomorrow other than the isolated showers due to the heat. Uh, Alex has actually already ate dinner. She had spaghetti. I've got my tacos de uh, rehydrating. I wanna eat those real quick. And we'll probably get a lot of our stuff packed up in the next 10 minutes or so while my food's reheating. And then we'll probably be pretty much ready to hit the tent once it starts getting dark. Maybe go in there and just uh, watch something on our phones or just kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know. But just kind of relax mainly. And then we'll go to sleep and get up early for a good hike tomorrow. Now, I did want to show you one thing. This is kind of neat. Um, I was sitting here and I looked over. Wasn't even really paying attention to it where we jumped in here really quick for the rain. Someone has come in and carved this. And what that actually is, it's a bushcraft thing. It's basically used for um, bayonetting, you know, pieces of wood with a bushcraft knife. You take it, you put, you know, you put your knife across a piece of wood like that, and you just use this to hammer straight down, you know, like this. And I thought that's kind of neat. Somebody kind of carved that out, and I was telling Alex about it. I told her a lot of people do that when it's a return site, you know, like when they come back a number of times. So I'm gonna leave that here and kind of move it off to the side in hopes that if somebody comes in after us and they're not familiar with it, what that is, they don't burn it. Cause I'm thinking maybe somebody comes out to this site occasionally and they just left that here so they don't have to trick it in and out. But it, you know, that way they can make a fire with a bushcraft knife. So got it off to the side. That way, you know, it's still seen by whoever made it, the owner. But hopefully, like I said, hopefully nobody burns it. <laughs> Because somebody evidently come in and burnt the real nice log they had laying here as a seat. And that really stinks because we're over here on this rotted out piece. I mean, it's okay, but if, like, especially if we were doing a fire, it would kind of stink because we'd be over there sitting or you'd have to try to figure out how to sit over here on the ground. But we're going to enjoy the evening. I'm going to go ahead and get my food down, eat that real good and enjoy that. And then we're going to get stuff packed up and kind of just relax for the next couple hours and then head, head to bed, guys. It's about 9.15 here. We finished up dinner and getting ready to just pack up what little bit of stuff we have left laying out, get that all up under the vestibules of the tent, get everything kind of set up. We're gonna relax for a few minutes as the sun finishes setting. I think the sun actually is down below the horizon. I think it went down at 912. So it's gonna start getting dark shortly, but we do have a pretty nice sunset out this direction, sunset out over this hill. But out this way, we've got some uh, clouds. I do have pictures of that up on Instagram and Facebook. Check that out right here. I'll leave those links so you can uh, go over and see some of those pictures, definitely on Instagram. I don't post quite so much on Facebook because I'm having a harder time getting it out on trail. It doesn't get as good a signal. But uh, it's been a really good night, like I said. Nice and comfortable. I mean, I'm not hot at all. I'm pretty sure we're gonna rest really well tonight. Looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be awesome. For Living the Grand Adventure, I'm Kevin. Alex is with me. Hello. <laughs> Once again. Hello. Yeah, she, she says good night. Uh, we're going to head to bed here in a few minutes. Like I said, probably I'm thinking 10, 1030 at the latest. I don't even think it'll be that late. Honestly, we'll probably be in that tent once it gets dark. But if you have liked the video, go ahead and give us a like, a share, a uh, comment down below. I'll get back to you as fast as I can uh, with any responses, especially if you have any questions or any comments about what we're doing here at the channel. I'll get back to you with a response as fast as possible, depending on if I'm on trail or not. And also, please give us a subscribe. It really helps us out. The channel is starting to build pretty quickly. Uh, we've gone uh, about 50 subscribers in the last two months, which is awesome. And I'd like to see it build even more. Really enjoying sharing our adventures with you. It's been a tremendous time. But for tonight, make sure you always remember to live your grand adventure the fullest because it's very important. We'll see you in the next video on the trail, which will be tomorrow for us. Until then, guys, take care. See you later.